now it's time to get into some application of using the normal model or normal distributions. If you've been watching some of my videos, uh, we were looking at the basics, but now let's look at a word problem. Let's look at a real life problem and, and use normal distributions to find our answer. So a few things as I read through this. A Ford Focus manual transmission gets an average of 24 miles per gallon in city driving with a standard deviation of 1.6 miles per gallon. A Focus is selected at random. What is the probability, so here we go, probability, what is the probability that it will get more than 28 miles per gallon? Assume that gas mileage is normally distributed. Since it says normally distributed, we can use a normal model, and that's bell-shaped and symmetric, and there's some other things about the normal model that are important. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a picture. <clears throat> this is the one that I want. And I'm going to label some things on this picture. So as I go through this example again, a Ford Focus manual transmission gets an average. So there's my mean. There are two things that I need in order to set up this normal model. I need mu, the mean, and sigma, the standard deviation. So the average, or the mean, is 24 miles per gallon. As I continue reading, I see that it says um, a standard deviation of 1.6. So there's my standard deviation, sigma 1.6. And I want to know what is the probability that it will get more than 28 miles per gallon. So I'm going to highlight more than 28 miles per gallon as well. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and draw this and see, you know, label this graph and see what I've got. Well, I know that the mean is always going to be in the center of my distribution. So right here is 24. And I know that I want to find out what is the probability that I will get more than 28 miles per gallon. So over here somewhere is 28 miles per gallon. So I'm going to go ahead and draw 28 right here. And I'm going to go ahead and shade this picture with the yellow here and what is shaded in yellow the area under the curve represents the probability that I will get more than 28 miles per gallon so here we go I've got a picture everything is good but how am I where am I supposed to go from here well if I'm going to use a normal model I want to change everything into a z-score whoops I didn't mean to move that but I want to change everything into a z-score so I'm gonna find the z-score for 28 and the formula for finding a z-score is x minus the mu divided by the standard deviation and this x right here is the value that I'm concerned with. In this case, x is 28, mu is 24, and sigma, my standard deviation, up here is 1.6. So I can plug everything into my formula. x is 28, that's the value I'm concerned with. 24 is mu, and the standard deviation is 1.6. Let me go ahead and grab my calculator, and let's figure this out. So here we go, 28 minus 24 divided by 1.6 gives me 2.5. So pull that over here just so we can see it. <clears throat> There's my z-score of 2.5. All right. Now I can go ahead and find the area under the curve. I know that my z-score in the center of my distribution is 0, and I now know that the z-score for 28 is 2.5, and I can find the area that is shaded in yellow. Once again, I need to go to my calculator and use the normal CDF function. If you haven't been watching my videos, you might want to go back and watch some of my previous ones on finding the area under the curve so that you can figure out uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to go second vars to get to my normal CDF function. Choose number two. And my left-hand boundary is 2.5. And my right-hand boundary is going to be positive 99. So 2.5 comma... 99. You always want to give the left-hand boundary first, the left-hand z-score, and then the right-hand z-score. And I find that the area that I have shaded under the normal curve 
is right here, 0 0.0062. Now, <clears throat> I could also write 0 0.0062 as a decimal. And if I write it as a decimal, that would be the same as 0.62%. Or I said decimal. I should have said percent. I've got it as a decimal. I can write it as a percent, 0.62%. Now, since we started with a word problem up here, we should always end with a sentence. So watch what I'm going to do. This is, this is really pretty nice. When you have a word problem, I want to know what is the probability that it will get more than 28 miles per gallon. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to copy it. Edit. That's not giving me the option to copy, so let me do this again. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to just change this from a question into a statement. What is the probability that I will get more than 28 miles per gallon? Let's rewrite it as the probability that it will get more than 28 miles per gallon is about 0.62 percent. That's not exactly 0.62 percent. That's why we put a, the word about. But even if you left that word about out of your sentence, you probably would be okay. I'm sure that I know that I would be okay with it. Anybody else who's watching this, your teacher would probably be okay with it too. So there we go. I'll do another example in a different video.